international human rights lawyer Emmanuel Ogebe has written to U.S. President in a last death effort to stop the U.S. government's delegation from attending the Monday, May 29th inauguration of Tinumbu as Nigeria's new president. In the letter dated 26th May 2023, Ogebe of the Washington-based U.S. Nigeria Law Group highlighted U.S. Nigeria policy contradictions in light of the misguided White House inauguration delegation and gave eight reasons why the nine member delegation led by U.S. Secretary of the Department of Housing and Urban Development, Marsha Fuji, should not proceed to Nigeria for Tinubu's inauguration. The letter reads, unedited, Dear President, President Joe Biden, as a top U.S. Nigeria affairs expert, I write to express grave concern and great displeasure at your planned delegation to the inauguration of a fraudulent elect in Nigeria. To say that your action is hypocritical and antithetical to America's democratic ideas, ideas is an understatement. Firstly, as your administration is prosecuting hundreds of insurrectionists who try to overturn your election win, Nigeria also reports arresting over 700 individuals for election offenses. How then can you accord legitimacy to multi-state election criminality in Nigeria that exceeded even the January 6th levels? Secondly, the BBC has exposed a fake election collator who announced fake election results in River State, falsely granting the ruling party victory over the Labour Party. A collector in Nigeria is similar to an elector in America. Yes, why your administration is investigating for prosecution fake electors who attempted to subvert your election, you are celebrating the candidate rigged in by the fake collector. According to CNN, the New York Times said some potential crimes could include falsified voting documents mail fraud or potentially a conspiracy of the fraud to defraud the united states attorneys general from the seven states with fake electors have said they are aware of the reports and reviewing the matter under state law some referred the matter to the justice Depart department because it relates to a federal election and it's happened across several states deputy attorney general lisa Monaco told CNN in an exclusive interview that the Justice Department received the reference and that our prosecutors are looking at those and I can't even say anything more ongoing more on ongoing investigations. Michigan Attorney General Dana Nessen, a Democrat, has publicly said she's confident we have enough evidence to charge people under state law for forgery of a public record and other crimes thirdly nigeria's 2023 election violence was deadlier than general Buhari's military coup 40 years ago than the 2019 election and even than the january 6th insurrection making a mockery of your descriptor of him as a champion of democracy fourthly your government announced sanctions on unnamed officials for undermining democracy in Nigeria's election, then immediately announced a high level delegation to inauguration of the votes Riga. This classic one step forward, two steps backward, first trot is just the latest iteration of America's uh, see, forensic Nigeria policy. It is tantamount to condemning a rapist, then going to attend the premiere of the rape video is short. Sadly, this is just about America's auspicious Chinese Africa checkers posturing. This has been the Pibola uh, policy since the Clinton administration to the present. During your proud Obama Biden administration, you designated the leaders of terror group Boko Haram as terrorists but refused to designate the group itself as a foreign terrorist organization despite the fact that it attacks american diplomats and fbi legal attached venice uh, gutrin and jennifer dent in deadly suicide bombing 
your administration covered up the attacks on these American women in Nigeria, which happened during your first term to this day and only designated Boko Haram in the second term when your current deputy attorney general Monaco, who was pro FTO designation, moved from DOJ to the White House and I led a human rights campaign to designate it via U.S. congregational action. Why is your administration again engaging in cognitive dissonance by denouncing the rigging and embracing the rigor? Hmm. Denouncing the rigging and embracing the rigor. Fifth, fifthly, the Nigerian presidential election not only did not meet global or local standards, it's probably it's probably did not even meet constitutional thresholds like the u.s constitution on which it was molded the nigerian election have mandatory threshold similar to the popular and electoral college requirements in this case candidates must have 25 percent of votes in 24 states and the capital nigeria's ruling party did not obtain 25 percent in the capital as required by the constitution in the same way that you could not lawfully have been declared presidential in 2020 president in 2020 without securing 270 electoral votes no one could be lawfully declared president in nigeria's february elections without winning 25 percent in the capital abuja why is the u.s legitimizing unconscionable unconstitutionality that wouldn't even stand in the u.s more so when a lot of taxpayer funds were invested in Nigeria's election system. Sitly, the U.S. more than any other country knows that there is not just a problem with the process but a problem with the person thrown up by the fraudulent elections. The U.S. has the recipe Receipts of Senator Bola Tinubu's reported narcotics involvement, suspected ID theft, multi-million dollar money laundering, New York property acquisitions, alleged forgery, and so on. In over a quarter century, Syria crime spree in the U.S. A former U.S. drug mafia accountant and alleged complicit former Islamo terror state governor are set to take over America's top trade partner in Africa. Even though FBI legal attach Jennifer Dent reported to the Nigeria government and the corruption agency that Chicago State University had no record of Bola Tinumbu's attendance and survived an attack by Boko Haram emanating from his running miss domain. Seventhly, your delegation is to go into Nigeria days after the first known deadly U.S. embassy convoy ambush following years of U.S. cover up of attacks on American diplomats and citizens like special agents in charge Jennifer Dance, amongst others. Why mask is continue in intensity, intensity with triple digit fatalities in Benue, Plato, Niger, and Kaduna states in a couple of months since the elections? Your administration has continued to proper to paper over Islamist genocide by unlawfully delisting Nigeria from review and citation for egregious religious persecution since you assumed the presidency. Nigeria had been subject to derogatory designation since the inception of the International Religious Freedom Act over two decades ago, including ironically under your Obama-Biden administration until you came and illegally and uh, surreptitiously dropped Nigeria's designation as a country of particular concern. Even as a Christian school girl was born alive on video in a government school by muslims and no one convicted since last year the u.s is not just coddling transactional terrorism by both the fulani militia and icc west african but grossing over a religious apartheid and genocide in nigeria both politically and terroristically why continuing to endanger American lives? Ironically, Secretary of State Blinken's latest blackout of Nigeria's religious freedom crisis came weeks after ordering the unprecedented evacuation 
of most American diplomats and their families out of Abuja due to Islamist bombing attempts on American diplomats' homes in Nigeria in October and General Buhari's inability to secure them. Buhari's delegation to your U.S.-Africa presidential summit last December stayed in D.C. hotels alongside hundreds of U.S. diplomats displaced from Abuja for weeks. The U.S. denier of the ongoing religious genocide at the expense of refugee American diplomatic families was an unspeakable traversity and slight of their service. As such, the State Department states of denial continues to claim the lives of Nigerians needlessly and threaten the lives of America as well. As Dr. King as Dr. King said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. In a perfect epitaph to your administration's barrier of religious freedom in Nigeria during your summit, Kano State sentenced to death by hanging on an Islamic cleric, Abdul Jabbar Nasiru Kabara, for blasphemy. Yet you pronounce General Buhari a champion of democracy. Eighthly, is your administration's plan to return tens of millions of dollars looted by the Nigerian dictator General Abacha, who abducted, tortured, imprisoned, and ultimately exiled me to America as a young lawyer 25 years ago, back to his bagman, and used over $150 million left over to fight climate change in Nigeria? This notwithstanding that Nigeria has more pressing priorities and this is a wrong message to send to, lut to lutocrats. In conclusion, the, foreign, the foregoing are just a few examples of the yearning chasing between American ideas and Nigeria's aspirations in your policy orientation or lack therefore. It is reflective of a disturbing disconnect between your administration, which has a number of high-placed Nigeria-American officials, which is commendable, and their desire to see Nigeria do well. Mr. President, you have a chance not to be on the wrong side of history, not to vote against the hopes of the Nigerian-American community, who are a key component of America's black demography or millions of Nigeria, Nigeria's youth who, whose neck are under the uh, needs of Nigeria's kleptomaniac gerotocrats. You have a choice not to repeat the mistakes of the Obama-Biden era, which thankfully caused corrected in the second term, but you have now effectively reversed. Let's, don't let America irretrievably lost its moral compass on Nigeria with Nigeria yet again. On this anniversary of George Floyd's state mother and the approaching Memorial Day, do not dance on the graves of Nigerians murdered in fraudulent elections to foist a money launderer for drug cartels that destroy American lives. Cancel the ignoble inauguration delegation now. Hmm. So guys, let's hear your opinion on this. Thank you.